I'm Andrew Warnes. I'm a reader in uh, American Studies at the School of English at the University of Leeds. And the subject of uh, this podcast is going to be The Great Gatsby and the Roaring Twenties. So it'll be taking a somewhat sort of historical um, approach to Fitzgerald's uh, novel. Um, the purpose, I guess, is to sort of try to make that time period come alive to you as students. Um, whether I'll achieve that or not, we shall see. But I hope you'll agree with me that when faced with that kind of challenge, historians often tend to place, place particular emphasis on relevance, on the similarities between a particular historical period and the present day. So we often hear the phrase, just like us, facilitating this. One historian might say that the Romans had underfloor heating and indoor plumbing, just like us. Another historian might say the Victorian press were just as fond of a good old-fashioned sex scandal as the hacks of Wapping are today. In these kinds of cases, and for obvious reasons, the identification of continuities between the past and the present appears the best way of introducing audiences to historical periods that might otherwise seem forbiddingly unfamiliar. The temptation to take exactly this approach to the Roaring Twenties is strong. On the face of it, there are many similarities that we can choose from. Indeed, when we consider many aspects of 1920s American life, that phrase, just like us, springs readily to mind. In the early years of the 1920s, the years in which Fitzgerald wrote The Great Gatsby, Americans experienced bewildering technological change, for example. So just as the gadgets that we used just 10 years ago, from DVD recorders to disk drives, now seem shockingly obsolete to us, so many Americans in these years, the years immediately after the Great War, first acquired a set of household devices that rendered earlier equipment redundant. 